here, but um, if you don't mind people trickling in, you're welcome, Works to, for me. You're welcome to get started. Okay, oh, might um, as well. There might just be a few more people Absolutely. trickling in. Absolutely, okay. Yeah. All right, so good morning, or where are we? Good evening, actually. My name is Heather, and we're going to talk. Does anyone know what we're talking about today? Yes. Moths and butterflies. Butterflies and moths, exactly. So I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. We're going to look at some pictures and talk about what, what is a butterfly, how is it different from other insects, how is it different from other animals, and the differences between butterflies and moths. Um, and then we're going to um, read a story about butterflies and moths, which is my favorite. And then we're going to do three things. We're going to, whoever wants to, we're going to line up patiently. And if whoever wants to, can go in the butterfly tent. And I have one butterfly, and you can hold it if you want to. He's very friendly. And um, I had hoped to have more, but only one so far. So at least I have him. And then you can choose one craft. I have a, um, a caterpillar craft and a butterfly craft. And I'll explain those to you at the end. Yes. What, what? What's that in my hand? Oh, this is my clicker. And I'm going to make the pictures go forward. Hopefully not backwards. So to start with, does anyone already know something about butterflies? Um, if you do, you can raise your hands. Yes? Um, they start as caterpillars, and then they wrap a silk cocoon around yes. themselves. That Excellent. turns jade green, and then they yes. get out of it. Exactly. So they start as a caterpillar, they turn into a cocoon, and sometimes it's green if it's a monarch, and then it turns into a beautiful butterfly. Yes. They use their tongues to smell. They use their tongues to smell, and they also use their tongues for something else. Anyone know? To, to drink. Yeah. And yes? Um. So they have these things on their wings that give them patterns, and they're really small. Excellent. Exactly. Anyone know what those things on the wings are called? They're like bird's feathers. Scales. Yeah, they're called scales. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, that monarch butterflies um, migrate to Mexico in the winter and come back to Excellent. the U.S. Exactly. You guys already know so much. Two more. Yes? Uh, they help flowers. They do help flowers. Butterflies are wonderful because they help flowers and other plants. And last one, yes? Um, um, when they migrate, they, yeah. they migrate from North America all the way down to South America. Isn't that crazy? So we're going to talk about the incredible the monarch spots. migration. I know. Who can do that? It's amazing. Like, um, okay, one final one. Yes? Some cocoons are the same color as a pea pod. Oh, they're called pupils, exactly, pupils. So, all right, so to start with, what kind of um, animal is a butterfly? Does anybody already know that? Is it a mammal? Yeah? Um, it's a reptile. It Excellent, close guess, because it has scales, right? And snakes and turtles have snails, um, scales, but it's actually another type, yeah? Insect. Insect, you, girl, you guys got it, exactly. So all insects are going to have six characteristics. And let's just talk about those real quick so you can see how they fit in with other animals. Um, whoopsie, oh, there we go. Wait, is that a butterfly, you guys? Bee. No, that's a bee. But this is a great picture because it shows you insects, that all the characteristics they share. All insects have three body parts. They're all going to have a head, a middle part of thorax where their wings and legs are attached to, and then an abdomen, which has some of their organs in it, like their stomachs and stuff. All insects are going to have six legs. All insects are going to have, what are those two things insects use to fly? Wings. Wings. One minute, sweetheart. Um, all insects are going to have two things on their head called antennas. And they all have something cool where their skeletons are on the outside. Has anyone learned about that in school? And do you know what that's called? Exoskeletons. They're exoskeletons. Yeah. So our, our skeletons are on our insides, but theirs are on the outside. And then they all have mouth parts on the outside. And we can, we'll talk about the butterflies. Yes. Today you started That's cool. So this is how it looks on a butterfly. You can see his little tiny body is inside. His wings are huge, right? And how many wings do they have? It's sort of a trick question. Four, exactly. It kind of looks like two, right? But so they're going to have four wings, two on the top and two on the bottom. We can see their antennas. And uh, it's hard to see their six legs um, from this angle. But they're, this is their caterpillar form, right? And even though they have all these little um, things they use to propel them along, they really only have six legs. So even a caterpillar is a traditional insect. His six, six legs, legs are in front. front. And then he um, uses those other things to help them scooch along. 
Has anyone seen a caterpillar in real life? I'm four too. Yeah. And you're four too. Excellent. We raised them in kindergarten. Excellent. Raise your hand if you raised them in school already, so you already know something about them. I need mine right. DJ Fiji. DJ, did you guys all have your own one too? Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Hang on to it, please. We talked about the um, mouth part they use for drinking. They also use it for smelling um, and tasting, I mean. Does anyone know what that's called? It's kind of a tricky scientific word, yeah? A proboscis. Proboscis, yeah. Can you guys try that? It's a tricky word, proboscis. Proboscis. Uh, yeah. My that's teacher they, yeah? called it proboscis. Yeah, so there's a C in there. So it's usually silent. So you can call it a proboscis or a proboscis, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so they're going to use it when they aren't drinking. They're going to roll it up into like a garden hose, into a coil. I think my baby up. She opens her eyes, and when I lay it down, she closes them. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about butterflies, and then I'll hear all about your cute doll. Um, so when they're not using that, it's all rolled up, and it um, is stored right there like that. And then when they see a pretty flower or something they're going to drink from, they open it up. And can you see that? It's opened all the way up, and they're going to use it to drink the nectar. That's all that they have for a mouth prop. They don't have teeth and other biting things like other insects. Yes? It's like a folding drinking straw. It's like a foldable drinking straw. Has anyone used a drinking straw before? Yeah, Yay! right? We all have. So it's kind of like that. It kind of, But theirs rolls up, and it's not. ours isn't attached to our face, luckily, right? But theirs is, and that's all they do. They don't ever like chew vegetables or anything. It's just everything is a liquid they're holding. Everything's a um, So we talked a little bit about their scales. They just look like they're a beautiful pattern, but in fact, their wings are made up of these little itsy bitsy tiny scales, and that's what makes their beautiful color. And they're all different colors. Yes. If you brush the scales off, it'll hurt the butterfly, but not much. But they can grow back, and it'll still be able to fly. But if you break their wing, then then they're gonna die. Yeah. So the scales do come off. And I'll tell you the super cool thing about scales, one reason they have them is because one of their biggest predators are the, um, girls I can't hear in the back, um, one of their biggest predators is the spider. So when they land in a spider web, are spider webs sticky, right? Yeah. So their scales are gonna stick to the um, web and their whole body will be able to, to fly away because their scales are stuck there. So that's a super cool, um, uh, informational piece about their wings and how the scales help them survive. But they also help them for other reasons like camouflaging, looking beautiful, finding mates, telling predators that they're um, poisonous and things like that. Um, so caterpillars and moths all have the same life cycle. They're all going to start out as what? Does everyone know how they start out? An egg. An egg, exactly. But eggs are tiny. Egg. If you're at school and you have a pencil, it's going to be like the tip of a pencil, so tiny. Um, from that, they're going to go into a caterpillar, and they're going to have lots of different sizes of caterpillars as they shed their exoskeletons and get bigger. They're all going to have a pupa stage. It's called a cocoon and a moth stage. We'll talk about that. And then they're going to be an adult, who are going to lay their eggs as well. Yes? When Painted Lady Butterfly started off like uh, like a quarter of my pinky fingernail, Yeah. and then it grew to like the size of my like isn't that cool? So they're going to shed their old skins, and you'll see those in the bottoms of their cages if you're growing, if you're raising caterpillars. And they each get bigger and bigger, and um, until they're ready to form the pupa. Yes. That's so cool. Yeah. So this is a close picture of the egg. A lot of butterflies will just lay one egg on one leaf, so that when they hatch out, the first thing they're going to do is eat their egg case and then they're gonna eat the whole leaf that they're on. Um, but sometimes you'll find a lot of different leaves like that. Does anyone already know what plant the um, monarch butterfly lays its eggs on? Yeah? On the what? Good guess, yeah? 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 Milkweed. The milkweed. So if you ever see a milkweed, you can look it up if you don't know what it is. Always turn the leaves over because sometimes you'll see the little monarch butterfly eggs on there and they're tiny like that. And they're just hidden under the leaves. They're all around us even though we don't always see them. Um, this is a great picture because it shows you all the different sizes they become before they're ready to emerge into a butterfly. Can anyone see the egg hiding on the leaf there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you have to really look closely when you're in nature to see them. Yes. There are different colors for the caterpillars. Yeah. And different patterns. Yeah. So every caterpillar species will look different and every
every butterfly species looks different. Um, and when they're ready to grow, they can't just grow skin and get bigger like we can, but they shed their exoskeleton and it comes off and they leave it like a sleeping bag outside their body. Um, this is the, the cocoon of a, um, um, the chrysalis, I mean, of a, of a monarch butterfly. And when it's ready to hatch, it becomes see-through. And you can see the wings inside. And I have a super cool video to share with you. And I will um, show it now. It shows you how they, um, how they go through their whole life cycle. I think you're going to love it. I think it's so cool. One second. So at first he's just going to eat and eat and eat, right? He's got to eat so much before he um, turns into a butterfly. Some butterflies do all their eating when they're caterpillars, and when they're born, they don't even have a mouth, and they just fly around without eating. Yeah. So moths only live a few days before they die. That's enough time to lay and, ha and have and get eggs, and they die, and they're born without mouths. Isn't that crazy? The luna moth, too. Have you guys seen the luna moth? It's huge. Um, he's born without a mouth. So now when they're ready to form um, their chrysalises, they're going to form like a J, the letter J. And look at him kind of wiggling. He's going to shift his skin up because he's done with it. He's turning into a chrysalis now. This is sped up very quickly. This doesn't happen like this right before your eyes. <laughs> that would be funny if it did. But this is several, several days. And oh, I see the right head. Now, I see the head. Yeah, right now he's inside the chrysalis. And what's coming up is just old skin. Yes. Uh, the, the, so, the soak moths, they yeah. scrape the silk out of their rear ends. Oh, that's funny, right? And then he kind of shake it off. Can you see where his like, legs used to be in antennas? Ew, that's gross. It's kind of cool, though. This is mostly, that is mostly cool. It's a little bit gross. It's like and, and then slowly the um, chrysalis is going to become hardened. And then there's going to be another one there. This one is even quicker. Um, and then his skin is going to go up. And then it just sits there, sometimes a week or sometimes two weeks. And it slowly, in the monarch, will become clear. You can see when it's ready to emerge. Um, crazy, right? It's so amazing. And that one already hatched out. They missed it, I guess. The camera wasn't ready. But this one is ready. And you can see him sort of trying to push open the skin. Super cool. Because in nature you just see caterpillars usually and then butterflies and you don't see this process in between. So he's going to push out of the bottom. crumpled and wet and they have to pump blood into them and get them sperm before they can fly. Yeah. Do you have a question? And then he takes off and flies. Yes? I actually saw my butterfly hatch. Did you? It's very, very special. Yeah? I have two at school. Two butterflies? But they already hatched. They already hatched. Yeah. It's a quick process. Is it about butterflies? Um, butterflies and birds. Yes, they drink the nectar from flowers, exactly. So let's, we talked about the life cycles and things that they both share. Does anyone already know some differences between butterflies and moths? Yes? Butterflies um, have more colorful yeah. scales than moths yes, do. Exactly. So in general, butterflies are going to be much more brightly colored. Yeah, They're going to be so pretty. Yeah. Yes? Much more yeah. pretty. I've only seen like yes. antennas have like hairy. Yeah, mothy antenna, this one isn't a good example, but often they look like feathers. They're much bigger and they um, have a lot of little um, things on them that are more, uh, they're so different from the butterfly antenna. Yes? Um, my, our farm camp teacher, me and my sister's farm camp teacher said this. Gypsy moths are invasive, which means they come from a different country, and here they have zero predators. Yeah. Because not many people can eat their poison. Yeah. And so, so she, so if you see a gypsy moth, kill, because you want to kill a gypsy moth so they don't invade America, so they don't rule the world. Right. Exactly. Because there's definitely too many of them. 
Did you want to add anything else? Um, that um, Mark's body is bigger than a than butterfly. butterflies. Yeah, in general, they're going to be like a little plumper, a little rounder. Yeah. And they, yeah, that's exactly right. Yes? Uh, moths are attracted to bright lights yes. at night, so yes. they gather in a garage if they turn the lights on. Yes, exactly. Those are exactly the differences. Um, so we talked about the antenna. You can see the moth ones. They don't all look like that, but in general, the moths are going to have more feathery antenna. And the butterflies have like little balls on the ends of there sometimes. Um, the bodies are, in general, going to be smoother and um, thinner in a butterfly. And they're kind of be rounder and kind of look like they have fur on them. Are they really covered in fur, do you think? No. It's more like little hairs. Um, the chrysalises are different. It's going to be hard in a butterfly, and it's going to be kind of silky and squishy in a moth. They even call it a cocoon. It's got a different name if it's a moth. Um, sometimes a moths wrap them up like a, like a taco or something, and they make their cocoon inside of a leaf like that, and the butter, uh, moth emerges when it's ready. Um, so they're so different, right? Because what we saw in the video was a butterfly on chrysalis. And we talked about the gypsy moths. Has anyone seen these cocoons in their yards before? They're huge, and they'll cook, they'll have a lot of caterpillars in there. Um, and those are the ones that take over all our trees and everything. Yes? On YouTube, there was a video <coughs> of unfortunate things that happened to people. And then on one, and then I saw, and then in the video, there was a bike covered with gypsy moths. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. We've had and a then, couple bad years. And then the title said, they can have my bike now. <laughs> right. You can have it. So look for these in the woods when you go for hikes with your moms and dads. These are huge cocoons. You know, they can be like this big, like a dinner plate, and they're full of gypsy moths. Yes? If butterflies can change to caterpillars. Yeah, so it goes from a caterpillar caterpillar to a butterfly, exactly. It's so cool. Um, so we talked about one difference, but moths are, are that thing that comes out at night. What's that word when animals come out at night? Anyone know? Nocturnal, exactly. So moths are mostly nocturnal. During the day, they're going to be sleeping, and then butterflies are different. They're going to come out during the day. Um, and like we said, if there's some bright lights at night, all the moths are going to gather and hang out there. So like this could be your soccer field at night or whatever, and um, the lights, everything you see will be a moth, not a butterfly. Um, so those are the differences. Um, so questions, yeah? Uh, when you see gypsy, uh, gypsy moth, mm -hmm. uh, like cocoon, do you like knock it down or do anything? So it depends, you can do what you want. If it's on your property, a lot of people try to do knock them down because um, they take over, they eat all the leaves on a tree, they can even harm trees from taking over them. And have you guys ever heard the sound at night, like when you're having a barbecue or whatever, and you just hear them eating like all the leaves in your yard? And it sounds like rain sometimes, but it's them all like yeah. pooping, pooping from the trees. That, that could feel. Yeah. I actually try to protect nature as much as I can in my right. school. Excellent. Well People done. are trying to destroy nature. Oh. Well, let's just talk about um, some ways that butterflies protect themselves, right? So one way we talked about is their scales don't stick to spider, their scales do stick to spider webs, but their bodies are able to come out of it. Um, what do these look like on these, on these moth and butterfly bodies? What do you think those look like? Any guesses? Yeah? Circles. Eyes, they look like eyes. So one of their predators are owls and some big birds. So if an owl or a big bird, um, it looks, it's, look how close that looks to an owl, right? So if a bird's trying to eat it, a bird is also afraid of an owl. So it will um, try to get away, and it will stay away from the butterfly. Are those really eyes on its back, do you think? No. Those no. are scales. Those are scales, yeah. Um, yes? Yes, do you have a question? At nighttime, at nighttime, I saw the one fireworks tonight, and it makes a loud noise. Yeah, fireworks are loud. We're only going to talk about butterflies right now. The other cool thing is, anyone ever tried to catch a butterfly? It's so hard to catch. They do this thing called erratic flight. Like, instead of just flying away, they go all over the place and they loop around, and it's so hard to follow them and catch them. If you ever just, like, 
as a playfully try to catch one one day, you'll see it doesn't travel straight and they're hard to catch. So that makes it hard for predators to catch them. They I blend in with things, they camouflage. I've um, stumped on a moth before. Because you couldn't even see it? It was so well blended? No, no I was actually ch chasing it and I, oh. and I got it. And he went, oh, okay. <laughs> Anyone see a moth camouflage there? Yeah. yeah, right? So sometimes when they're sleeping during the day, they're gonna blend in. It looks like he's resting on like cement or a walkway, no. so he could risk getting stepped on also. So that's one of his defenses. And we already talked about the great, a little bit about the great migration of the monarchs, right? So I actually have a map here to show you. We're up here in Massachusetts, and our butterflies, just the monarchs, are gonna fly all the way down here to Mexico. And I don't know, has anyone ever here driven through a part of the country like all day or anything? Yeah, it takes so long, right? But they're gonna fly that distance and even further and go all the way to Mexico. And it's amazing if you can think of it, their little bodies, right? And their strong wings are able to do that. They're gonna only travel one way. They're gonna fly all the way down there and they're gonna find the trees that their ancestors, their other monarch butterflies, of relatives landed on, and they're gonna stay there and spend the winter down there. Why do you think animals like butterflies might migrate? Does anyone have any question? Any to lay eggs, exactly. And they, their bodies, any other guesses? Yeah? Yeah, so they don't, their bodies can't stand our, our winters here, but instead they're strong enough to fly that distance. Um, so they spend the winters there where it's warmer, right? It's warmer in Mexico. I don't know if anyone's been there yet. But they'll find the same tree where their ancestors um, spent their winter years before that. And scientists are still trying to understand how they can fly that far, how can they can find a tree and know the distance when they've only traveled it never before. This is they only go down once. And then they are going to land like this in the thousands. People who have seen them before said so it's amazing. Then they're going to fly back and lay their eggs. And their babies are the ones that are going to fly back here to Massachusetts. The adults um, don't make it back, they just um, die after they lay eggs. Okay, a lot of questions, yeah. In a Mexican town, uh, they worship the butterflies and they have a butterfly festival every year and it's called the Butterfly Town. I love that, that sounds so cool. If we lived down there and it was crazy too, we'd probably want to do the same. Um, do you have a question, yeah? Yes, exactly. So that's that. That's the question. That's all about the butterflies. Um, from what we talked about, can you tell me, is that a butterfly or a moth? What do you guys think? You can just shout it out, a moth. Can you tell? For, even though he's got skinny antenna, his body is all flurry, um, furry and soft. And it also Yeah? Butterfly. It also what? It's also very dark. Yeah. Butterflies are right. usually very light. Exactly. Excellent. What about this guy? What do you guys think? Butterfly. Butterfly. How can you tell his antenna and his colors? Is this about butterflies? Butterflies and pandas. Okay, you know, we'll talk at the end about pandas. Because right now we're just going to finish our conversation on butterflies. Uh, what do you guys think about that guy? Butterfly. Butterfly. Excellent. Uh, what about this? Can you guys see what that? It looks like he almost has fur on it. And can you see his defense here? He kind of looks like a horse too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, butterfly. And butterfly, excellent. All right, so that's also some things we didn't touch upon are butterflies sometimes taste with their feet. When they land on the flower, they can taste and see if it's sweet enough. Does anyone here um, taste with their feet? No, that would be Pretty gross. Pretty gross if we did. I know. They only fly 12 miles an hour, that's so slow. Most of the time when we're driving, it's at least double that. Um, and we talked about how some moths and even butterflies don't have um, mouths. They only eat when they're caterpillars. And there's only um, a small number of butterflies. Most of the um, things out there are moths. Yeah. Um, is it a question about butterflies? Some humans, um, some humans with a baby, baby. Okay, we're gonna talk only about butterflies right now, okay? So that's it for now. Um, I'm going to tell you about our project now. Um, do you have a question or any, anyone else have a question? Yes? Me. How was it going to hatch um, um, the and the Yeah, so they're going to
going to have a life cycle where they lay their eggs and they turn into a caterpillar and then the adults will lay eggs and it just keeps on going through time. So, all right, I will talk, to, we can talk about other questions after, but right now I'd like to get started and show you um, the butterfly tent. We're going to have two friends at a time go in. We're going to take our shoes off. I, I started with five butterflies and there's only one left, so we want to be careful that and make sure everyone gets a chance to see one. If you decide to go in and hold the butterfly, um, is there any way it could hurt you? If you, some people are startled or a little frightened, but they don't have teeth, we talked about that. Do butterflies have claws or anything? No. no. And they don't have teeth, they don't have claws. They're so soft and gentle. We can accidentally crush them by accident, so we have to be careful of them. But if it lands on you, you don't have to be frightened or startled. It's just a surprise sometimes, but it's, it, they don't hurt us. Yes, they're going to be real. Yes. Yeah, so excellent. Good question. We're not going to hold him by the wings or grab him or anything. We don't want to scare him or hurt his wings. So what you do is when he lands, and I can help you, you can just put your finger under his little feet and he can crawl onto you. He's so light, it's like a feather, you'll barely feel him. But we're just going to have him land on us without holding his, his wings, okay? So what we can do is we'll line up here slowly. It's going to be a, just a minute each. We're going to be very, one second, everyone sit down, please. We're only going to have about a minute each in there because we want to make sure everyone gets a turn. So while you're waiting, there's three things you can do. One of them is try on these bug glasses. Insects have different eyes than us. Instead of one lens like we have, they have many. So you're welcome to try on the bug glasses. They're all the same. And you can see um, how bugs see the world. It's quite different than us. Then the other thing is you can um, read any of these books while you're waiting as well. And then the third thing is you can choose one craft over there. One of them is to make uh, this hungry caterpillar. And you're going to start with a clothespin put some glue on it, and then um, make a pattern or whatever you want with pom-poms. And then just put the eyes on the end. And when it's dry, when you get home, you can squeeze the end of it. And this is his little mouth. You can like put it on your shirt or your backpack, wherever you want. That's one project. If you choose instead to do the butterfly, you can make a butterfly that sort of flies like that when it's dry. You can choose any color paper that you want over there. And then we're going to glue this popsicle stick to it and these antennas, which are like little pipe cleaners. And then there's some sequins and some glue that you can, um, glitter glue that you can make patterns with, okay? So choose a butterfly or a caterpillar. Um, we're just gonna like maybe have a line of six people at a time so you don't wait too long. And everyone else can do their projects right now. Um, so to start with the first two friends in line, if you could take off your shoes, please. That would be great. Yeah. And like I said, we're only going to have a minute, okay? Um, so come on in, you guys, brother. All right, so go on in. Too much time. I'm gonna, he's right here in my hand. I'm going to uh, hand him to you. Oh, where's his face? Oh, oh, sorry, two at a time. Okay, so I'm going to put him in here. He's going to be scared at first. Oh, no, he's a little cutie. Okay, I'm going to close this only so he doesn't escape. Can you guys switch back to give him some room? Yeah, have a look. I check at these sides so you can see. And then one minute we'll pass him to, isn't he friendly? Isn't he so light you can barely feel him, right? I know, I love that. Very cool, right? Yeah, thank you for sharing him. So if you put your hand right in front of his face, yeah. Isn't he light? Oh, nice. Isn't that cute? Are you his mom here? Do you want to take a picture? But look, leave, stay in there. Leave your hand in there. You did. That is so cool. Did they? Did you let them go when you were done? Do you want to come and do you want to wait and come together? Nice, sweetheart. Can you get that? <laughs> Can you look up? Oh, 